Lessons three and four, what significant political figures impacted the state? This lesson covers standard H8, element C, discuss the impact of the political career of Eugene Talmadge, and standard H9, element D, discuss the ties to Georgia that President Roosevelt had and his impact on the state. The goal of this lesson is for you to be able to write a two paragraph response. Paragraph one, well, you're gonna write a paragraph describing how the role of government changed as a result of the Great Depression and the programs of, of President Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal. And then evaluate the position of Eugene Talmadge on FDR's New Deal programs. That will be your second paragraph. You should include any opposition Talmadge came to have to the New Deal programs and why he felt this way. There's one term that you will probably need to know to help you with this lesson, and it's gubernatorial. This is relating to a state governor. For example, a gubernatorial election is the election for a governor. In his gubernatorial election campaigns of the 1930s, Eugene Talmadge, wearing red suspenders and rounded glasses, promised Georgia's rural voters that they had three friends in the world the Sears Roebuck Company, God Almighty, and Eugene Herman Talmadge of Sugar Hill, Hill, Georgia. Though extremely popular in Georgia, historians debate whether his policies as governor did more harm than good for a state ravaged by the Depression. Eugene Talmadge was born in Forsyth County, Georgia, on his parents' farm. He was born in 1884 and died in 1946. He attended the University of Georgia and earned a law degree in 1907. In 1920 and 1922, he unsuccessfully campaigned for the Georgia General Assembly. However, in 1926, he won his first election as Commissioner of Agriculture, a position he held until 1930. In his role as Agriculture Commissioner, he was able to cement his standing with rural Georgia voters by presenting himself as an advocate for the farmer and common man in the Department of Agriculture's widely read newspaper called the Market Bulletin. Though involved in a political scandal concerning the misappropriation of funds in the early 1930s, he ran for the office of governor in 1932. Due to his rural support, and the power of the county unit system, he was elected in 1932 and again in 1934. In his campaign, Talmadge promised Georgia voters that he would balance the state's budget, lower the utility rate, reduce the price of auto tags, and reorganize the state highway board. Talmadge lived up to his promises, though his means were questionable. According to the New Georgia Encyclopedia, when the legislature refused to lower the price of automobile tags, he did so by executive order. When the Public Service Commission, a body elected by the voters, refused to lower utility rates, he appointed a new board to get it done. When the Highway Board resisted his efforts to control it, he declared martial law and appointed a more cooperative member, more cooperative members to the board. Talmadge also made decisions that hurt the state. He fought against Roosevelt's New Deal policies, especially those that aided African Americans and opposed Roosevelt's renomination in 1936. Due to a Georgia constitutional amendment barring Talmadge from being reelected in 1936, he made two unsuccessful campaigns for the U.S. Senate. However, in 1940, he was reelected and made a decision that greatly damaged the state's university system. His success in forcing the University System Board of Regents to remove two faculty members of the University of Georgia for undermining the state's racial status quo or supporting integration led to the Southern Association of College and Schools to remove the state's accreditation of all white colleges. This led to Talmadge's defeat in the next gubernatorial election. So in other words, there was um, a man at the University of Georgia that was very popular and very well respected and there was a rumor that he wanted to integrate one of the schools at, at the University of Georgia and when Talmadge found out about it he 
persuaded members of the Board of Regents who are an, a, the head of all the colleges in Georgia to fire several faculty members and several administrators from the University of Georgia. When they decided not to do this, um, he got rid of more people. And the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools, or SACS, um, took away all of the accreditation. Um, our school is accredited, and that's how you get HOPE scholarship to go to colleges and how you get um, other scholarships like athletic scholarships. And without our accreditation, no student can get that. Talmadge was down but not out. In the 1946 election, rural Georgians helped to re-elect Talmadge, who was running on a segregationist platform for a fourth term. However, Talmadge died before taking office. After Talmadge's death, the Georgia General Assembly selected his son, Herman, as governor, though he had not even run for the governor in this election. Um, this interesting event will be covered in the next unit. It's known as the Three Governors Controversy. Franklin Roosevelt visited Georgia over 40 times from 1913 to 1945. Primarily, he came to Georgia and stayed at his home in Warm Springs, which became known as the Little White House. During his presidency, Roosevelt exercised in the warm water pools of the spring to help ease the crippling effects of polio, a disease he contracted in 1924. Roosevelt used the seclusion of warm springs to take a break from the strain of his four terms in office. While in Georgia, Roosevelt made several appearances and made many speeches throughout the state. He was well loved by most Georgians due to his New Deal program, which provided aid to many suffering from the effects of the Depression. He endeared himself to many Georgians when they heard that he became a friend to the locals in the Warm Springs area and hosted a Thanksgiving dinner to all the patients in the spring. Georgians overwhelmingly supported Roosevelt, Roosevelt in all four of his presidential contests. However, his visits to Georgia were not without controversy. Many in the North, including his wife Eleanor, did not think that Roosevelt did enough to help end segregation and the lack of civil rights in Georgia and the rest of the South. He also angered many Georgians when he spoke against what he considered to be unfair labor practices in Georgia's textile industry and urged for them to remove conservative Democratic Senator Walter F. George from office due to his efforts in blocking New Deal legislation. Roosevelt was visiting Warm Springs on April 12, 1945, where he died after suffering a massive stroke. Most Georgians were extremely saddened about the loss of their adopted son. Today, many people still go to Warm Springs for treatment of strokes and injuries at the Warm Springs Rehabilitation Center, and Roosevelt's home is visited by thousands each year. When Roosevelt was president, we saw the role of government change drastically, or the role of our federal government. Before the Great Depression, the government policy was more of a laissez-faire policy, and we discussed this in our last lesson. So you can go back and review lesson two if you need to. But just briefly, laissez-faire is a lack of government intrusion in businesses. If a business is failing, it was up to them to get it fixed. After the New Deal started, the government stepped in and began creating jobs for the people that were unemployed. There were programs that were specifically designed to help businesses that were in financial trouble. The federal government began to get bigger and more expansive. They began to influence state governments by pumping money into the state for the New Deal programs. When you write about these changes, make sure that you provide examples to support your statements. This task has an informational paragraph to help you get started. So what do you do now? 
of course you're going to want to read more so you go to our google classroom and find the lesson three and four assignment there are articles that have been posted for you to help you along the way you have a task to complete which is also on google classroom you're going to write two paragraphs paragraph one should describe how the role of government changed as a result of the great depression and the programs of President Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal. Paragraph 2 will e evaluate the position of Eugene Talmadge on, fed on FDR's New Deal programs. This will be the second paragraph. If you have any questions, either comment on Google Classroom or if we're in the classroom, you can just ask.